Well, thanks for coming in, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Saying 25 in Proverbs 24, verse 10. <clears throat> if you faint in the day of distress, how small is your strength? If you faint in the day of distress, how small is your strength? Many people are in relationships where they're under distress. Um, if you meet people that have been abused and, and damaged before you come along, um, severely used and damaged and abused, and they've allowed themselves to be that way for an extended period of time, not just one or two years, but 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, <clears throat> this has a tremendous catastrophic result on their personality and traits. They carry a lot of trauma. They carry a lot of brokenness. And what happens is people try and rescue these people. They try and rescue those being led away to death. And there's some people, unfortunately, while you're with them, it's just their lot in life to go towards um, death. They just want to do things that lead to death. They're dead in sin. This is what Jesus said. They're dead in sin. And if you faint in the day of your distress, when they've... Um, you see, your relationship probably never, probably never was a relationship. The night that you met that person and you were love-bombed or they love-bombed you or whatever the case might be, they saw you and they've gone, I've got to have this person. That was something that they needed to have. It wasn't something that they wanted to love. And if you faint in the day that you realize this, if you're in a relationship and you're starting to realize, I'm just a means of supply here, this person's really not making the effort to love me they may have started to devalue you they may have caused separation for you they're staying longer at work they're not turning up when they should they're seeing you less <clears throat> this is probably because they've got other people that they're seeing this is probably because they're interested in somebody else A lot of these people are alcoholics, they're addicts, they're on medications. Um, if your intimacy is high level, this opens up a whole world of ego for them. They start to grandiose their sexuality and think they can share it with anybody and conquer. They end up on their own, broken, diseased, mentally diseased, physically diseased. They corrupt all the goodness and light that they had, the water's gone cordial, the light's gone dim. And if you faint in the day of that distress, <clears throat> if you'd have faint when your spirit's singing out to you, this person's causing me distress, you might be triangulated by family members. The family members are using your partner to cause distance in the relationship. I had one woman completely blot out one half of the relationship. I watched and watched and watched. She was allowing the, the narcissistic golden child who was having a psychological collapse to take out half of the relationship. And I just watched for nine months. And I waited. <clears throat> and they shot themselves in the foot. I got the blame apparently for his whatever was going on. No. No. I didn't faint. I wasn't blinded. I watched and waited. And it got so dragged out, right, that I felt sorry for this woman. I just did because she couldn't find a solution for everyone. I was all right. I was just watching from the outside looking in, thinking if you call this a relationship, you've missed something somewhere. <coughs> You know, you see to them, you are intimate with them, you supply showers and food and tell them to conquer. And you don't faint 
no matter what distress they're bringing to you, you analyze it and go, no, that doesn't, that this doesn't add up. This person's got some personality disorders that are not healthy for where this is all headed. How long do I wait before I realize that it's time to go? <clears throat> Because you don't want to doubt people. You want to give them the benefit of doubt. But if you've got something that's going on that they're connected to, that they're, that's the wipe, wiping out your relationship and they're not doing anything about it, their strength is small. Not yours, theirs. They've become faint. They haven't resolved what's causing the distress, which was in a couple of instances golden child, scapegoats. <clears throat> I was hoping one of those, I, was, I thought the scapegoat might have become a black sheep and broke the generational um, curse that was on that place. And same with the woman I married, but they're too faint. Their strength's small. Their backbone won't face the curse that's on them. And if you're faint, when all the signs are there that this isn't good and it's gonna, not going to end well, <clears throat> these people that bring unresolve into relationships usually triangulate beyond their children to find somebody else who's going to take away their distress that's being caused between themselves. You see, people that are strong, that have standards, the, the people that haven't built into themselves, haven't worked themselves, they're fascinated by that. They want the light. <clears throat> but they can't keep up with it because they faint. Their addictions and their dysfunction causes them to faint. They're not living at the same vibration. They're not living at the same level. They're coming in to try and build on themselves through your strength. But the distress that they're causing and having caused to them by flying monkeys that have fallen out of trees and broken vines and are limping around, slipping on banana skins and things, <clears throat> they're entangled. And they're entangled before you come along. There was no strength there. They were too hostile. And they couldn't recognize what you were bringing. They couldn't recognize that you were coming as a whole person to bring light, love, give, take, care and share. They had too many things that they were trying to fix with inside themselves to focus solely on a healthy relationship. The people that were closest to them were faint. They were living on grandioso love bombing, emotional love bombing between themselves. And this buys into the delusion and fantasies that they have which make excuses for where they've ended up in life. They don't want to face where they've ended up in life. And that's why they're faint. They've let life slip by them by due course of their deceitful lust. Their strength is small. They're fickle. They're not as strong as they think, and that's why these people are combative and hostile. It gives them a sense of strength, but it's a delusion. Strength comes by integrity and morality and protecting what you have when it comes to love. It's not sitting on the fence and halfway on the fence causing people distress, wondering, you know, what's all this about? Why are you doing this? And why haven't you done that? To, you know, produce something that is strong because their thinking is not big enough. When you're limited to addictive thinking, um, your addictions will win out. And all addictions and, and alcoholism and these sorts of things are going to do is make you faint. Somewhere along the line, you are going to come undone. I don't care who you are, what you think you are, you are going to come undone. 
because you're taking the backbone out of yourself. You're not allowing yourself to be resilient. You're copping out. You're bringing distress on yourself and everybody else by the faint-heartedness that's involved in all of this negligence. And you've got people running around trying to rescue these people from their life of death, right? They're having sex with whoever and all the rest of it. They can't keep a relationship together. You can't rescue these people. You've got to walk away. Once you've realized that these people are faint, they're going to cause distress, their thinking is small when it comes to morality and integrity, right? And it's going to attack your strength if you let it, if you're not awake to it. You can't rescue these people or restrain them from stumbling toward their slaughter because they they default back to zero. They default back to their faintness. It's too easy to be faint. You don't have to have an excuse if you're faint, right? You can write it off as, as vanity, as naivety. That's how small it is. One minute they know everything, the next minute they, they're naive. You can't rescue people that are going to destroy their relationships, intimate relationships. You can't try and restrain them with your idealisms and things that you think a relationship needs to work by. You just have to watch them stumble on their own to the slaughter, which is the ruin of their relationship. And you need to let them go, re-establish yourself within yourself, get your life right, Plan it right, make it right, establish yourself, bring your energy back to yourself, get your strength back. And remember, you just can't rescue people that want to live in sin. Let them go because they'll take you down. They'll distress you. You'll get trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder and all the rest of it because you're being abused. You're just a meat suit for their supply. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.